The Remington rolling block is one of the most important firearms of the 19th century. It was chambered in more calibers and offered in more configurations than most people can keep track of. Let's take a look. The most common rolling blocks are the large frame military models, like this one in 43 Egyptian. It was made about 1870. However, the first guns were designed by Joseph Ryder during the Civil War and utilized a split breech where the hammer goes through the breech block to fire the cartridge. The split breech models were in large caliber rimfire only and were made in both large and small frame design. The first patents on the rolling block design were issued in 1863 and 1864. Development continued and the nearly final rolling block design was in place by the late 1860s. The first rifles purchased by the U.S. military were the 1867 Navy carbines in 5045 centerfire. During this time period, Remington also began licensing the Remington system and the use of the rolling block patents. This 1867 Danish rifle is one of the most often encountered. A unique feature of the Danish model is that it could fire either rim fire or center fire ammo. During the 19th century, Remington and its licensees produced millions of military rifles for various countries. These rifles are all referred to as number one rolling blocks, but have slightly different features and are found in several different calibers. The most frequently encountered are from Egypt and Spain, chambered in 43 Egyptian and 43 Spanish. The U.S. Armory in Springfield, Massachusetts also made a few rifles under Remington's patents for the Army and Navy, such as this Model 1871. An interesting feature on this rifle is the half-cock safety. When the breech block is closed, the hammer drops to half-cock and must be pulled back to fire the gun. Rifles made by Remington for the New York State Militia also had this feature in both rifles and carbines. These guns remained in service with the New York National Guard until the late 1890s. Beginning about 1868, Remington produced a large frame sporting rifle based on the military action. The actions are slightly thinner and early models featured a round top receiver. Sporting rifles were generally made with octagon barrels and the stocks are more graceful than the military versions. The trigger guard is also shaped more gracefully. Sporting rifles were available with many options, including upgraded sights, set triggers, and about any barrel length and weight that the customer wanted. In the early 1870s, Remington began making receivers specifically for the sporting rifle, and these can be identified by the flat top versus the round design of the earlier models. Number one sporting rifles offer a great collecting opportunity, with only about 10,000 produced. Calibers range from 22 short all the way to 5070 government. A shotgun version was also offered, chambered in either 16 or 20 gauge. In the mid-1880s, Remington introduced a lighter weight version of the number one sporting rifle. It was designed for smaller cartridges only and is called the Model One and a Half. It features a thinner receiver than the number one and the receiver is flat sided without rebates. The number one and a half generally features a shorter and lighter weight barrel than the number one. Less than 5,000 were made when production ended in the late 1890s. The number one and a halves are generally found in pistol type calibers, ranging from the 22 rim fire through the 4440 Winchester center fire. The baby carbine is a variation of the number one and a half rifle. It was a military version made primarily for the export markets in Central and South America 
and is chambered for the 4440 Winchester centerfire cartridge. Remington used the basic rolling block design for handguns, producing pistols for the U.S. Navy beginning about 1865 and for the Army in 1871. The Army versions have a different frame and grip angle, and all pistols made for the military are in 50 caliber pistol. Remington also produced civilian versions of the pistol in commercial calibers. A small, lightweight rifle, the number two, was introduced in 1872. This rifle was developed from the 1871 Army pistol receiver. The number two was an accurate and reliable single shot rifle and was offered in several variations in both rimfire and small caliber centerfire. The number seven rifle was made from 1871 Army pistol receivers and is a true target rifle. The rifle was made by reshaping the rear tang of the receiver, then adding a shoulder stock and a longer barrel. The smallest rolling block was the number four and was offered as a boy's rifle. It was available in 22, 25, and 32 rimfire and utilized a slightly different internal mechanism than other rolling blocks. When the number four was first introduced, it was available only in a solid frame version. Later guns were takedown, where the barrel could be removed from the receiver by either turning a lever or a thumb screw. Remington used the rolling block action for several different cadet rifles. Cadet rifles resemble larger military service rifles, but were shorter, smaller, and lighter. The last cadet rifle made by Remington was the number 4S. Early rifles were called Boy Scout models, and the name was later changed to the military model. Smokeless powder was introduced in the mid-1880s, and in 1898, Remington upgraded the steel and design for the new higher pressure cartridges. These rifles are called number fives and are generally found in seven millimeter Mauser as well as a few other calibers. The last shipment of rifles was to France in 1914. These guns are chambered in eight millimeter French Lebel. The basic rolling block design was popular in large part because it was so simple, so durable, and it was chambered in all the popular cartridges of the day.